about where you want to be at this time of the year? Well, I can, the smart answer is yes, we're right <laughs> next door. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think so. You know, Jim, I, I really don't know. I never know that. I mean, um, I think we are. I mean, uh, we're getting healthy. Um, I thought. I think condition-wise, we're in pretty good shape. You know, um, you know, there's always work. You know, and and um, and you know, so you just try to, you know, project ahead on what you need to work on. And um, but you know, I don't know as a coach if you ever think you're where you should be. I don't know. If, you know, I don't even know that answer. Would you welcome a team to come off the bench? You said that that's what he prefers. But I mean, what do you prefer? I prefer winning. And so whatever it takes, you know, if uh, if he wants to come off the bench, then a lot of times he will because he does. He likes that. Uh, but if it's better for the team to start, then he's going to start. And, um, you know, uh, but I love the fact that how many guys with his ability to say they're good coming off the bench. You know, most guys don't say that. Um, Jamal does. He's a great weapon for us coming off the bench. Uh, when we're at full strength, it's an easy decision to bring them off the bench. But when we're not, um, and you know, especially if we go in the playoffs and we're not, then it'll be a game by game basis. Will he come off the bench tonight again? Yeah, you can tweet it. Yes. You can be first. Jamal, yeah. I didn't know he played 32 minutes. No, that's number one. Uh, yeah, he's been good though. You know, I just think the two practices kind of told us that he was out of the woods. Um, you know, I guess you never are with that injury, that calf injury. It tends to linger, uh, but he looks good. You know, you can see him trying. He doesn't have his timing yet, uh, and so that'll just you know that'll take a little bit. Um, but overall, like his movements, look, he looked natural. He didn't look like. He was laboring at all, which is good. If you're at full strength, um, who would you go as the starters? I mean, you could see it to be your big three guys, would it probably be Matt and JJ? Or? Yeah, it's pretty good, yeah. Yeah, most likely, you know, unless, you know, some we changed it. But uh, that's that would be what I would think. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, hell, if we think someone else is better suited, we'll do that. But that would be a good lineup for us. Is it still is it too early still to look ahead of potential matchups first round in the playoffs? No, not for my staff, but for me it is. I, I'm not looking at that. Um, I mean, privately, you don't have to specify teams, but I mean, looking at potential first round, you already get a sense there are certain teams you might have a better matchup. Possibly. I don't. I don't really believe that. Um, you know, I, I really don't. I never did um, Boston or. I just think you go out and play the team, and because they're going to be there regardless whether you want to play them or not. And uh, you, you know what I mean. So, I you know I, I hear it all the time. I, I heard the same in Boston. So it's no different. You know, from even management and you know I hope we play this team. I said I just hope we play. You know, and if we play well, we should win. Uh, and that's the way I always look at it. So, but. Uh, honestly, from a staff perspective, you are looking uh, because you have to send your scouts out. You know, you have advanced scouts that usually scout the next games. Where on the next three or four games, we'll we'll take them off the road and send them and assign them to one team. Uh, the problem is we may not have enough guys because there's so many teams you could play. Uh, but we'll still do that and just probably bring in more guys to just. You know, I've, I've hired ex-coaches to do that uh, for me in the past. You know, Flip Saunders has done it. Lawrence Franks has done it when they were, you know, out of work. Um, and they, they were great at it. So, um, you know, we'll do that again. How do you see the stretch the last 12 games as far as how it sets up in the schedule, especially with that five games in a row on the road? I, I don't even know. I honestly I haven't looked more than the five games. Uh, how does so. that affect you in that respect? It doesn't, not for playoffs. It just makes it hard that you have to win games still, you know, and, and you're on the road for five of them and you're playing good teams on, you know, on, uh, of the five. So uh, that's just a hard stretch for us. Um, you know, it was our last hard road stretch and we just have to get through it. Um, you know, you want to win them all and you want to try to stay healthy through them all. And the road is hard. The road's hard for everyone, you know, and so it's going to be hard for us, um, you know, but we'll see. It's sort of good, though, to get five out of the way, though. You're, just, you're done with it. I guess. I'll let you know when I get back. I mean, I don't know. I, we've had, what, two seven games and another five earlier? I mean, so what is that? Uh, 
anybody go to class? That's 24 games. That's over half your games in, in four stretches. You know, I don't know if that's a good thing or not when I think about it. I'll, I'll let you know. It's a big trip for us, you know. It's uh, I don't know what it is for the playoffs, you know what I mean? Yeah, I guess winning on the road helps. Um, you know, I guess it helps, but I just think winning helps. And wherever you win, it helps. And so I, we want to win all of them and, and focus on one at a time. If we do win them all, does that help us for the playoffs? I'm going to say no. It really doesn't. Uh, it doesn't hurt you. Uh, and it helps you in the fact that it will – definitely put you, you know, in a great position playoff-wise as far as home court, you know, and so that's more important uh, than, than how you're playing, because you get the little break, you know what I mean, right before, it's not a big break, but you do, and, and it's all over again, that's how I look at the playoffs, it all starts over again, and whether, you know, you, you could play great going into playoffs and get there and a team just catches you, you know, and you're out, and especially in the West, so... Uh, I don't think JJ will play on this trip. He could, and I don't know if he's going to travel or not yet. I, I really, JP, will tell me. I don't even ask. Why do you think DeAndre Jordan numbers are up so much, especially his rebounding numbers? He's averaging like more than five a game now, and it's career high. Well, I think he's doing what he should do. I, mean, I think he's he's playing to his ability now, and uh, I think that was going to come. Uh, eventually. Uh, I just think he's a super player, he's a super kid, and I think he has found himself. And Yeah, yeah, and I think that's where he found himself. You know, I think most bigs get confused on who they are. I think every big, uh, you know, you see him, you can go to, I guarantee you, go to a high school gym now, some coach is trying to teach the guy how to shoot a hook shot like Jabbar, and not realizing the only guy that can shoot a hook shot like Jabbar is Jabbar. No one's done it again. And then they realize, well, maybe he should be a defensive player uh, or something else. And so I just think DJ on his own, um, you know, has, has he's kind of figured out who he is and how he can be a great player. And um, and he's doing it and he's chasing it. And it's been great for us. Uh, we we get the benefit of what he's found, uh, but it's, it's, his, it's just maturity and he's kind of found himself. Like when you first got here, did you say your intention was to basically try and create a solid product that won basically the title? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or you know. did you want to mold it to the image? No, I don't, I don't know what my image is. So, I mean, <laughs> holy cow. You want to know? That's, yeah, I don't want to know that, actually. I don't <laughs> want to know. That would be scary. Uh, but, no, it's what you said. Um, you know, Benny did some great things here. And so I, I, had the, I have the luxury of trying to, you know, molded to, you know, even better. And a lot of it is not me. A lot of, like, in DJ, it's just maturity. You know, each year you, you go through a play. And in the West, it, it's, it's, you know, it's just, it's hard. You know, first round is a hard matchup. And you can be ready in that win. So it's just, so then each guy through that, they grow. You know, pain, you know, when you lose, that's painful. And no one likes that. It doesn't happen too often where, where a coach comes into a situation like this, you know, after 51 seasons, and then gets another 51 season, unless it takes his season to play. Yeah, unless you just get hit the jackpot, like you, you know, you get draft picks. I mean, it, 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 it happens, uh, but it's rare. When you sat down with, the, you know, in terms of changing the culture, I mean, how big was it creating this home court here in terms of? I think home court, I think it's, it was the number one thing. I think you, you have to try to establish that. The road is hard. Uh, the road on the west is brutal. And so you need some place, you know, where you have a blanket, you know, if you're using uh, Charlie Brown analogies, all right? So you need somewhere where you can you just feel good about when you, you know, whether you can struggle somewhere, and, you know, go on a west coast trip and struggle, and then you see yourself coming back home, you feel good again, and then you can go back out on the road and maybe win, you know? Um, I think it's really important. I think it's saved us in Boston um, in, in 2008, at least. Um, and I just think that's really important. You're still going to lose a home game, you know, eventually in the playoffs. But you feel like, now let's go get one so we can get back that advantage. You fight for home more in some ways, you know, when you're, when you're more confident at home. Through all the success you had in Boston, could you have ever pictured yourself starting from scratch? 
Well, I, you know, listen, you, you think it's inevitable sometimes as a coach. You know at some point you're going to go somewhere else. And honestly, um, it's where coming here was, uh, uh, yeah, I could because I thought it was like, I just, I think it's a good challenge, you know, for me, obviously, but for our team and our group. And I've been in this organization. And I just thought, wouldn't this be neat if, if we can do it? And, you know, we got a lot of work to do uh, to do it. But at least we're on the road to it. Doc, how close were you watching the NCAAs this last week? How close? Yeah. I, you know, I watched it. Um, you, know, it's, you know, but you're watching it in different ways now. But I do watch it, and yeah, it was interesting. I'm just curious, the guys that are supposed to be the top few picks next year all got basically shut out this, mm -hmm. this week. And your thoughts on that? And and the transition from college to pro and well, it's hard because you're coming into a league. There's a lot of good players, um, but I don't think that waiver that changed anybody's mind. No one, no. Doc, what advice would you have? You're talking about DeAndre. One of his good friends is Larry Sanders. Yeah, he had a tough, tough year as you know. Yeah, uh, with you know his thumb injury, the bar brawl, then then he gets hurt on a fluke thing where Harden held. Yeah, well, injury. the first advice is the bar brawls. I would try to avoid those at all costs. That would be the first. Yeah, yeah, I've been in a couple of those. They don't go well. Uh, they don't tend to go well. Uh, you know, so you didn't that would get be, in that much trouble. Yeah, I did not. No, <laughs> my dad was a cop. He would have arrested me. Uh, I can tell you that. Uh, but you know. But I mean, when he's kind of had a lost season and he's, yeah, he's you know he signed a contract extension. It, it's it. hard, you know. But listen, uh, he has it in him to be what DJ is, and he's proved it at times. And you know, he just has to go back this summer, get back to work, and realize that he's a basketball player, and that's it. And and be that and, and focus on that. Um, you know, I think it's so much harder for the kids now than in, in, in Michael's era, you know, uh, <laughs> because really uh, all we were were basketball players. That's it. Uh, we weren't celebrities. We, were, we just played basketball. And I think it made it a lot simpler for us. I think they have so many more things now. And it's, it's harder, uh, but they can do it. Well, we all have them, you know. Um, you know, this team I think has a goal, and I think when you're a goal-oriented team, I think uh, drama is lessened. Uh, you know, when you just are showing up for games plan and there's really nothing to chase, then I think drama happens. Um, but I think that's the main thing. And but listen, I, I hope we have uh, how many players? We have 14. I hope all 14 want to play every night. Uh, I think that's healthy. Uh, I think it's healthy when they're upset when they don't play. Um, as long as it's, uh, you know, I don't know who said it. I clearly didn't say this, but, uh, you know, the ego, uh, the individual ego is important as long as it doesn't surpass whatever the team goals are. Uh, then I think your team's in a good place. Uh, if you have guys where their ego surpasses that, then the team's not in a good place. I think our team's in a good place. I'm going to leave on whoever said that note. Thank you. <laughs>